Welcome everybody to the very first UI UX design workshop. Before we begin though, Linode, the sponsor of this video, makes it easy to host your site, your app, or service on whatever technology stack you use. With one-click apps like WordPress and Drupal, getting up and running is easy. With back-end access to your server, customization options are all but limitless. A fully configurable DNS manager allows for you to easily switch your domain over to your new server, and SSL certificates can be installed for free using open source tools. So sign up using the link below to get $20 in credit on your new Linode account. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of Coursetro.com. So today I'm excited because I'm releasing the UI UX design workshop. And it's the very first episode. We'll see if you guys like it. If you do, make sure to hit like and let me know in the comments so I'll keep doing them. But basically, every other Friday, I've been doing a live design show where I really go through the design entries quickly. I don't really change. I just give verbal suggestions. This time, it's different. Um, I'm just taking three submissions, and it's obviously not live either. I uh, And I'm going to improve the user interface of them and also the user experience. All right, so I think this is going to be a little interesting. We'll see if you guys like it. Again, let me know, make sure to subscribe. Let's get started. All right, so here is the very first entry from Discord user Aussie Adapt, and that's Aussie as an Australian, I would assume. And yeah, there's a number of things that we're going to do to make this a lot better. So let's go ahead and get started with that. All right, so I'm just going to get started by having an actual nav bar at the top, and I'm going to take the name of the project and put it right here as a logo because it's more of just an afterthought, and it doesn't really help people really understand exactly what's happening. Also, no more hamburger menu because it doesn't make sense on a desktop. Yeah, that's bad for UX. You want people to be able to access things with just one click when you have the space. Also, I uh, right here in their about page, they just had that text that you see right here. And it just makes sense to help people know where you're at, what, what the site's about. So I put that right there at the top in the header. Next, I have the card design. And I just have a, a back, a, a very soft uh, shadow that's coming from it so that you can see the container itself, even though the background is white and the container is white as well. Um, here, he, he actually did a pretty good job on, on the card, like the inner structure of the cards, but I'm um, changing up slightly um, to make the button blue, first of all, instead of black, just to, to give it a little bit more color and also a uh, dual button because the endpoint or that button that you clicked was just showing JSON data. So you can view it and in my case, you can also copy it to the clipboard. Next up, I'm just gonna use Adobe XD's grid tool right here um, to get them all lined up. And then I just make some slight adjustments here on the positioning and the size of everything. All right. And then coming up here, I also do a secondary version just to show you how this would look in a dark mode format. And so almost everything's just inverted, although I did change up the button Instead of a border, I just kind of made it uh, gray like that. All right, and so this is the before, and here is the after. Hopefully you think it's quite an improvement. All right, and the next entry up is from my co-admin, JVS, in the Discord server. And obviously JVS is uh, initials, his name. Uh, there's a couple things happening here. There's a, there's a lot that's happening correct. A lot of white space. Um, I like that a lot. Um, simplistic elements here, something sort of abstract. The colors work well. Um, but there's a couple issues here. Um, the first, I would say, is um, prioritizing the information. Um, when it, when it comes to people who, you know, might be potential clients or employers, they visit your site, they're not so much interested in your name as they are about what you can do for them. Um, so I'm going to be making changes to this drastically. Um, and also the call to action is scrolled down for more information. information. That's way too hidden. You want something that stands out a lot more. Um, JVS kind of knows this since I, he, he I did this, but I'm just going to kind of drastically uh, change this up quite a bit. All right, so basically I get the same background color here. Um, I'm taking the name instead of putting it in the center and a focal point, I'm gonna put it at the top kind of like in a nav bar because it is, it's really not that important and I'll just uh, explain why in a second. And also I had a navigation of projects and hire me. I think that's important as well to have a good call to action. Now next up, this part is very important and it's uh, an element I decided to add. Uh, to differ from him. So I'm going to pause. So as you can see in his example for his ad copy, 
he just has his name, which is the emphasis, uh, or the most important element that people see, and then also his role, or his job title, which is a UI designer slash full stack developer. These two pieces of information aren't the most important pieces of information that you can emphasize. People are interested in what you can do for them. So it's really a good idea to have some sort of unique, concise, you want it concise because you want it to be large enough to really be able to stick out so you can have a few words. Um, kind of a, a descriptor, ad copy, something that's unique that tells them what, they, what you can do for them. What are the benefits? You always want to describe the benefits over the features. The feature is, is your name, the feature is what you do, but what can you do for them? How can you benefit them? So that's why I decided to add this part as well. It's very crucial to understand that. So next up I do the actual, uh, his role, which is UI designer, full stack developer, making it a lot smaller. It's a lot less important. Also, he had no scroll indicator, so I'm going ahead and putting that. That should probably animate as well. And then next up, I'm just recreating that symbolic uh, element, uh, that sort of abstract design element right here. And I'm making it bigger to fill out the space a little bit more so, at least on this desktop resolution. And I'm just replicating the artboard to show that you can do something way different, even like that. So here is the before, and here are the after variations. Let me know what you think. All right, now next up is this little section. This wasn't the top of a landing page. It was actually kind of in the middle. And I decided that we'll work on this part right here. There's a number of issues in terms of the lack of white space. We have an issue with contrast and also the form is not what is considered to be an accessible form. So I'll be changing that up and I uh, just making it quite a bit better. So let's get started. All right, so for this one, I'm just going to recreate the top and bottom containers that you see there, just for a reference in terms of how the white stage should be handled. Also for the headline, I decided to left align that in the left column instead of just centering it, and it'll be right above where the form will eventually go. So here I'm just getting the text situated with good visual hierarchy and all set up. And next up we have the form. So his form was not accessible because it didn't have any labels and just relied on placeholder values. You don't want to do that. It's a big no-no in terms of accessibility. There's a lot of issues with that. Um, people with screen readers and such, there's just a lot of issues with it. So instead, instead of using a placeholder value, definitely have a label like I did, but if there's also additional information like in terms of instructions like I did, just put it next to the label or underneath there's various you know ways to go ahead and do that. I just chose to put it to the right and also de-emphasize the importance just by making it a little bit uh, gray. So just a call to action button down here. And then I take the illustration and just uh, position it. All right, so basically this is the before and this is the after. All right, so for just one final look at the three projects that we did, uh, we got rid of the hamburger menu, as you can see. Uh, we changed up the background. We got rid of this line right here. We also provided some descriptor text about, you know, what the purpose of this actual site or this page is. And one thing we could also do, by the way, uh, if you find it a little bit too hard to see the cards, we can increase the contrast by taking the background from white and just bringing it down slightly. I think I might even like that better, even with the uh, added text shadows here, we could leave those as well. And then finally, a black and white version as well. Next up, we had this one. Again, just a ton of white space, a little bit empty. I think the biggest issue was uh, the information architecture or IA. Um, that was lacking a bit. So we instead decided to emph emphasize other things such as having a headline here, de-emphasize this and also his name. Also, he had to scroll down for more info, just tucked way down there where no one would see. This would probably animate. I would have this uh, in the actual front end development process, uh, up and down perhaps. And then finally, we have this right here, which you can see everything's just really uh, tightly scrunched in. Uh, it lacks white space, especially vertically. And also the other big issue was the inaccessible form. So what did you guys think? Did you like that or not? Let me know in the comments. If you did, of course, like it, leave a comment and also share it around. Hey, I'll see you guys next time. Hang out in the Discord server as well because I may feature your design next.
Thank you.